well, I've got the heater matrix fitted on now. Um, what I now need to do is pipe up these ends here to the feed and returns. So that's the feed. So I'll probably take that to this. And then that one to that one. They don't particularly, they don't, for some reason, the pipe work must be different between a Defender and a Discovery quite a bit. Um, and then I've got to connect that down there. Before I do any of that, though, this thing is pretty horrid. So I'm going to see what I've got in the way of a, some kind of a dishwasher cleaner or something to uh, try and clean that out. Uh, and then weigh up what I want in the way of silicons. Um, yeah. Trouble is a pipe work. Everything you buy is a minimum of about 15 quid, and then you start to have to chopping it about. So if you measure it up wrong, it doesn't fit. What I could really do with is making one up and bringing that forward another, I don't know, inch. And putting a return on at 90 to that. Now I could get some 16 mil copper pipe and do it in that. Uh, hmm. Bit of thought needed. I mean, that is only the return line doesn't have to go through that I could bring it out and round clip it off the top of here and send it down under there and it could all do me, be done with flexi conundrum that one because I could just buy two meters of flexible hose for about 20 quid and uh, cut and stuff and jobs are good and all you gotta do is make sure it's clipped up trouble is mop <laughs> I might look at buy the wrong bleeding stuff. Anyway, carry on. We have vent screens fitted. I had to drill a couple of new holes because I'd welded up new parts in where the old ones were. Anyway, one bit done. I brought her into the workshop because it's now freezing outside just dropped to minus one and she's grumpy because the heater is blowing across the warm air at her you couldn't back it up could you what's up sky anyway we've come into the workshop because we're having a look at the blower fan um, now a friend of mine had this motor apart because it was seized uh, sent it back to me without it all been, it was together, but not nothing was tight. So if I wanted to clean it up and paint the outside, I could do. Yeah. However, for whatever reason, it's fell out the bag that I had it in, and it got filled up with blooming grinding swarf in the other workshop. So I've now got it all apart with a view to cleaning it up, and then I'll treat the rust. I'm not going to get mad with it because, uh, well be honest with you I'd, I'd rather replace it than spending hours on it so I'm just going to clean it all up treat the rust with some rust converter and then wrap it back together apparently you can't take these apart so there's a conundrum for us so that little bush in there is some sort of oil light sintered bronze type of setup as a bearing and I reckon it's supposed to sit between the steel housing and that clip. And I think that clip at some stage has been put in upside down. Because as it stands at the moment, when that bushing goes into there, the clip's basically just pushing. It's not holding it in anywhere, which seems very odd because the reverse side is exactly the same profile top and bottom and this one that bushing is captive so there's a conundrum for you anyway i'm gonna put it leave it as it is and uh, put it back together that looks more like it a bit of a wrestle but uh, 
that then means that the pressing on the underside of this is locating the sphere and keeping it centered. Re rebuild the other end now. Oh, we've got the motor back together. And I'm just checking the, uh, the orientation. So that's spinning that way. Because these two wires are only just plugged in so they can swap them round. So that's spinning that way. So when that is on it, that's the right way. It's accelerating the air over the back because if it was going the other way, it'd be sucking air in. So it's pushing it out over the back. So, I just need to swap them over. So black's on that side. So I assume brown is the uh, is the live. Big assumption, because I'm bloody useless on electronics, or, sh or electrics. I have a guest in the workshop. It's been right going around picking the bugs up, I think. That's a tree creeper. So we'll try and get the window open for it. He's only a little fella. Here we go. <laughs> so we're just waiting for paint to dry and then uh, we can get the, the fan motor fitted back in and the uh, blower actually running. Um, only thing I'm, unc I'm unsure about is I've got two wires coming off a resistor inside. Yeah. So one's uh, green with yellow and we, we one's green with brown. And then I've got a third one. Now, from memory, and you'll have to excuse me because it's over a year ago when I uh, took this apart. Um, I seem to recall that that one was attached to the motor. <laughs> well, that's about as far as I can go. Um, I mean, it could have been a, it could have been wound onto that, and I've just snipped through them, thinking I'll chase them later. But um, I don't know. I just don't don't get why there's three. There's the resistor in there. And that is basically how it was set up. Seems a bit of a farce making it all this big old and then putting all that lot in the way of it, but that's how it was set up. So yeah, I've, I can't find a diagram with it uh, on. I can't find any written descriptions. I've been through the Land Rover book, both of them, uh, parts manual and the um, service manual. And I've been through the uh, Haynes book of lies and it's not in that either. So yeah, God knows. Anyway, we'll deal with that when it when it when we get there. So um, I'm at the stage where I want to basically put this thing to bed. Um, I've checked the resistance on the recommendation of a friend between each of these wires going in and that coming out. So to see which ones, to see if there's any difference in resistance, and there is. There's something like one and a half ohms. But I might have that scale wrong because I can't remember what it's what scale I was on when I measured it. Anyway, um, he then suggested I rig up a bench test. So we've got my battery. If I rig it up to this one, you can hear the difference in the tone on the motor. Versus that one. That sounds like definitely full chat. And that's not much less, but a bit less. <sighs> I'm wondering whether that resistor is actually doing its job fully. That's running on full chat. There's a small amount of vibration, but certainly nothing horrendous. Yeah, please be all right with that. My mistake, that one's full chat. That's pushing out some wafty bits now. All right. No real vibration. 
Yeah, jolly good, Lee. Job well done. We'll get that mounted tomorrow when the sun's uh, supposed, sun's supposed to be making an appearance. So that is basically is. It looks like a pea. <laughs> I might have to adjust that. Anyway, it sits around about there. Um, I've had to have the wing on because this thing has to locate against uh, an orifice on the wing. And then this pikey bit of foam connects the two. But I think that's seen better days because I think it's supposed to have been glued together at the ends. So I'll have to do some kind of it better. Uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, not a lot of room above. Um, it's odd that you know, the cut away that rib there as if it was going to go right back to the bulkhead, but it can't go any further back for the simple reason it's too high there. So that's it. Uh, I need a pipe now to connect up that to that. And I bet what I've got don't reach. So I'm now trying to work out how the hell this lot goes together. It looks as if that diameter there goes on to the end of the blower inlet. Uh, and it looks as if it was glued. But you see there's four or well, nearly four screw over on that. So the, I'm wondering whether I'm missing a piece which was some kind of internal flange, which may be that connected to, and then this was hung off it. Nothing like that appeared, so I'm gonna go have a look in the book of words and see what that throws up. But yeah, very nice thing I'll do is re rejoin that somehow and uh, yeah, right, next job is um, sorting out the windscreen wiper motor drive in position. Um, I've had a look in the book and there was a mount that sat, it sat on. Uh, I've had a look online and they want 19 quid for it, so we've made one. We've made it out of stainless, so it's never going to rust, ever. That's a piece of silicon hose. That will sit on there, and then the clamp over the top, through the bottom holes, and into the bulkhead. First job though is to get the these things mounted, and I've only got one of the original bolt, uh, nuts. Don't know whether I lost it or it wasn't on, but I've uh, found these which are the same thread. They're just a full nut, not a half nut. So I'm going to see if they'll fit. If they fit, then that's that one done. And get it mount, mount, mounted. Further knock on effect of the uh, windscreen brackets being a touch low. I'll have to check whether there was enough clearance for me nut to go in. All right, I know I've got it back to front, but I can get the nut to rotate round. And it'll go on to the engage on the thread. It's tight, but... That'll do. I've got to get a washer in there as well, yeah. Uh, however, on this side, can you see? Yeah. That's supposed to clear in that face up to that face. So I either elongate the hole, taking it down, and we'll look on the other side for that. So if I re-elongate the hole and take it down, I'm going to be dropping off that flat spot. Or I massage that bit, which is, I think the preferred option, because that shaft and that, pretty sure they're, they're one piece and then they're riveted or swaged into that. So I'll just take a file and pull flat on there so it locates. Yeah, annoying. Let me see if I can get a better camera angle. Yeah, you can see, you can see that it's not much, but it wants a flat on it. I noticed it on the other side, but it's not quite as bad. Anyway, we'll get on with doing that. That's better. You see how the face is flush at the top? God, it's hard getting a camera angle in there. That's better. I'll show you what I've took off. So they took about a dozen strokes. strokes. <laughs> And it's brass.
Yeah, I know it's not a round washer. I haven't got any rubber ones. So we've fashioned one out of a piece of rubber. Things for sure. That wind windscreen's never coming over open with that. That in the way, is it? That's, that's all gone stiff. What's going on? I think it's rubbing on that. As it tightens up, it's pulling it up slightly and it's rubbing on the underside of the windscreen frame. <sighs> That's where it wants to be. You would have thought it all be so Tricky. to there look. So that's a washer behind it show you from behind so we've got a gap at the back of it still where are we here so there's a gap between the boss and the frame and as it pulls up it's canting it upwards which is looking at rub on the frame. Okay. Oh, I've sorted that now. So I've kind of filed a recess on the bottom of the channel. That's spinning nice and free. I've gone for a, a non-locking nut. If I have to, I can put a bit of Loctite on it. 
and I went to put a little tiny washer, you can just see it in there, just uh, it's clamping on that face and not that face. Anyway, so I'd probably have to reproduce that on the other side now. At least I know how it goes together. That's took an hour. So we've got the same rubbing issue on this one. Not quite as bad. But it does sit. I haven't had to file the end of it at all, but uh, I mean, it could be I drilled the bloody holes half a mil out, but. Anyway, uh, probably going to put another washer behind that between the dash, the bulkhead, and that inner flange that clamps there, not onto that. And I'm going to fire a bit of clearance. So I'll bring you back when I've done that. Interestingly, uh, the book shows that this one sits the other way up, that way round, and that one sits that way round. I have absolutely no idea why. I mean, this makes sense for the powering rod track to run along the top rather than along the bottom. But it doesn't explain why that one runs along the bottom. Anyway, we'll see. Well, it's got it in and the cowl that fits over it on the end of the dashboard a whole bit. That's only just roughed in. It's a bit snug around that bit. And I'm not really sure how I can adjust that. Maybe bend, I don't want to bend that too much because of the um, drive going through it. But yeah, just a bit, why on earth would it want to do that? I actually think that pipe should be twisted 180 degrees so it runs more horizontal, but yeah, it just, just seems an odd way of doing it. You know, it's down below the uh, fly screen. There must be something that, you know, is obstructing it further along. Well, I can't think what. Anyway, uh, I need to find the plastic trim to see whether that that will fit round it. Otherwise, I've got to massage that. Absolutely beautiful morning. Well, I've been wrestling with the fit of this uh, wiper and end box, and I think there's an error, obviously, when I made this. And it really wanted a bit more of a belly here, just to give a bit more clearance on the wiper box. Um, it's in, I mean, that'll bolt up now. But yeah, it's a bit of a bodge, if I'm honest. As is the rest of the bulkhead, but there we go. Some stage I'll go through this. It's in a bit of a poor state. I've no idea what works and what don't work. Bearing in mind it's had water running down the back of it for quite some time by the looks of it. So, uh, I know you can buy the new bezels and the glass, but I think the glass isn't broke, so it should be all right. But it's these. You can't get them anymore. Anyway, that will goose. Yeah, I think we'll leave that to do it. Oscillator date.